Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know what everybody's thinking. All right. Now we're going to talk about DQs and suspensions <laughs> and all this drama in the fishing industry lately. But we're we're not 100% going to talk about that tonight. So <laughs> it's not April Fools, but it's close enough. It's close enough. So yeah, we got a good show in store. We have a lot. We have, I mean, obviously we're like late to the party. We're always late to the party because he's off fishing. I'm off fishing. Yeah, our schedules have been week after week. So both yeah. of us hadn't been here in a long time. What's yeah, this the last show. I did the last. No, I did a. I did a show by myself. Oh, did you? Yeah, you didn't even watch it, did you? No. <laughs> I don't said, watch any of them or listen to them. No, I do not. Don't it's do a good thing. Either. It's a good thing I listen to a few of them just to check the sound and stuff on them before they go <laughs> on podcast platforms and all that. But we are, uh, we're back, and we uh, again we're going to talk a little bit about the latest DQ. A little bit about everything. A lot's went on since the last. A show. lot. I a mean, lot. It's, what's so sad is like the Red Crest and the Classic has taken place since we the last time we were together oh, in the yeah. studio. We've had like <laughs> sore events. Since yeah, the last it's, time. it's, it's we, been a we, lot. We we had a good Let's Talk Fish show. I did do a wrap up of Toledo and Fork. I think. Did you? By the one I did by myself. Yeah, okay. actually well, I did. Good. All right, uh, real quick. Um, y'all know this, this show is presented by English Choice Marine. Um, English Choice Marine, um, huge White River Marine dealer, um, number one ranger, number one Triton dealer in the, in the U.S. Again, two years running now, I two think. Two years in a row. And they have locations in Martinsville, Virginia, Lexington, North Carolina, and Spindale, North Carolina. Um, they'll take good care of you before and after the sale. And uh, real quick. So Angler's Choice also took the reins, as everybody knows, from the Thursday night Moss Lake Tournament Trail um, after Mr. Arnold Ever passed away several years back. They came in, they stepped in, they've uh, they've taken them over last year, the year before last. This might be two the Thursday. Years ago. Two years ago. And um, since they've had great turnouts, Moss is a little bit late, as everybody knows, but they average about 30 boats every week. Um, but they start – up this year this coming thursday okay this coming As thursday that's two days from today april 4th is that correct on the day that would be correct april Today's 4th the uh, they actually have a facebook page they built all right anglers this is long but y'all bear with me anglers choice thursday night tournaments moss lake they have a facebook page that's the name of it tournaments are six to nine thirty they're forty dollar entry fees they have a big fish off at the end of the year in october and uh all you have to do is fish a total of 10 events throughout the season doesn't matter when they are you can fish first 10 last 10 middle 10 whatever and you're eligible for that championship they also pay an English choice bonus anybody that bought their boat at English choice top finisher gets a hundred dollars so even if you were and they do that for every tournament yeah every single tournament that's right that's a lot of the, money. the bonus and the championships even bigger though yes I guess it's extra the, the, the payout and the championships phenomenal for for a little Thursday night tournament trail they do a they do a great job, Mr. Mike Burchett and Austin up there from English Choice. Uh, but yeah, kicks off this Matt, Thursday. You're, you're already getting turkey recipes. <clears throat> oh, I need. I always <laughs> like. I like more. I like more. So they must have been. They must have seen my Facebook post. Oh yeah. All right, we. Uh, Real quick, I do want to make an announcement. Turkey season was in yet. Is it South in? Carolina. Ah, yep, started Monday. Nice. So you know where I was oh, that's Monday right. morning. Yeah, my buddy down there sent me a picture of one he killed too. There you go. Uh, my rods with Pulse Fish are now live on the Pulse Fish Lures website, available for pre-order only. Um, they will be landing probably sometime towards the end of May, um, guaranteed to ship sometime in June uh, to the buyers. I the wouldn't customers. guarantee that. Uh, well, I have Not some, the way boats have been hitting bridges and stuff. Like <laughs> I, I, I don't, don't think, this, I don't think it's so coming down that waterway. It's not coming down that waterway. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we have we have a little a little room to play there, but we, uh, we hope to have them in. Uh, relatively soon, but they are available for pre-order now on PulseFishLures.com. Uh, again, those rods, y'all, my, uh, my signature series, 189. Um, there's six SKUs in that lineup. The Pulse Fish rods will be 149, and uh, they will launch. Uh, actually, they might be 159. Anyway, 149 or 159. Um, they're launching very soon also, and uh, one of the best warranties in the industry. Keep Whoa, proof of purchase. Happened? It's an ad, Brian. Okay. Relax. I hadn't seen that before. It <laughs> snuck up on me. Hey, that means you're doing good stuff on YouTube when they throw ads in the middle of your live feed. Uh, <laughs> right, 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 Tyler? It's showing food now, kind of. Food? Oh, what kind of food? I might want to go back and watch mine that ad again. Ad. Yeah, mine was too. <laughs> uh, all right, but yeah, so keep your proof of purchase if you purchase one of our rods and, uh, you know, it's got a lifetime warranty. You break it, show your proof of purchase. Pay the shipping, we send you a brand new well, one. Where'd so. the feed go? Now I don't have the feed. Uh, he always has problems. It never fails. Every single well, time we sit down. It just says starting soon now. I All mine's working great, man. Well, all I did was X out the ad and look. 
Don't X out the ad. Just let it play. Oh. Well, I didn't want to look at it. I cleared Tyler, it Tyler, you better help the kid I'm over just going to reload it. Let me close okay, it. Okay, let him reload it. Let's see if he can do it himself. I'm, I'm if he be can, out of comments for If a while. he can, we're talking like next level with thrift here. So let's see if he can figure it out. Oh, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to graduate. Uh, all right. It might take me a minute, uh, but I'm going to get it. Again, uh, trivia question at the end of the show tonight. we got a good one tonight. Uh, I came up with it. Imagine that. We've had 140 shows. I've come up with 138 trivia questions myself. Brian's come up with two. But they were good That's ones, and he did come up with one. That is uh, a lie. We're giving away I a heavy duty. Way more of it. See, I got it. I'm back. A he- good job. A heavy duty <laughs> English yep. Choice way bag. I know everybody that hadn't won one has been wanting one because they've been commenting that they've been wanting one. And, uh, and an English Choice hat tonight will be the prize pack for the trivia winner. All right, let's jump awesome. right into it. We're gonna. I already got a bunch of comments about. We're gonna talk about Watson. We're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about that. Yeah. And we. Well, this we next talk. Talk about. We'll talk about whatever y'all want to talk about, and we'll try to address as many questions as we can as we discuss these topics. We'll try to read questions that hopefully relate to the topics that we're currently discussing. So yeah. and don't. If y'all jump, got any other thing you want to talk <laughs> well, about? Well, I'm just saying don't jump the gun too quick because sometimes we get so many questions in our feed, we miss some of them, and I don't want to miss any of them. But that's just that's just part of it. Uh, all right, Jared's asking for a poll. I don't know. A, a poll. poll on what? Like a, in the Jeff, middle of the table or like a tell, – Tell Jeff to do a poll. I don't what, – what's like the question a, we're polling there, Yeah, Jared? we can do a poll. Yeah, we can <laughs> for sure do a poll. Well, 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 well. Uh, Jeff's done polls before. Uh, Jeff left. Never did, mind. Did Jeff, Jeff left. left. We hope Jeff didn't leave because if we have a technical issue, ah, we'll figure it out. Lord help us. <laughs> we'll Tyler will be over there beating on iPad. I can look, fix look, it now because I got my phone back. If Brian can figure out his phone tonight, we can figure this out. Now, what's this we stuff? You know how technologically sound Brian and I are, which is I, make I it like really negative I, seven. I got it. Yeah. Well, um, all right. Go. We are going to jump into the Watson thing here in just a minute. Real quick, I'm going to dress up. So uh, the first part of the topic. Jeff's still here. First, Oh, he is still there here. There he is. Hey, can we still run a poll on this deal? Or was that just when we had Facebook? Can you poll on no, that's what I said. <laughs> can we run a poll like a, like a poll, like a, <laughs> like a question? I don't know. Let Jeff think about that. Maybe, in the maybe we can. Let maybe us know what can. kind of poll you're wanting. Um, that's P O L L. I'm assuming. So I think he's got it right. We, we. Uh, all right. So first topic tonight was the the DQ of uh, of Brian New at the Santee Cooper um, Bassmaster Open. The only thing that I have to address there <laughs> is uh, when Brian made that post. You know, I I noticed he threw Upshaw kind of under the bus, which. First of all, I would never – like, if Brian, you know, turned me in for whatever, I broke a rule, Brian turned me in, I wouldn't go posting it on Facebook that Brian Thrift turned me in. Just don't do that. I don't throw people under the bus, especially in public. Now, let no, me – I hadn't seen anything. Let, oh. let me – the post was – As I mentioned previously, again, I this is this is all out, old, old news. Um, what – what I will tell you this much. So here's the thing about our sport. I saw Upshaw, who went on his YouTube to – in response to that, mm-hmm. Upshaw was not going to bring news name to the public. He was not going to, you know. Anyway, he went on there and made a response. And he got a little hate from guys saying, you know, you know, they made comments like, you're a crybaby, like, you're a snitch. This, I said, let, let me tell you all something. Anybody that made a comment about being a snitch or anything like that, the only people that can police, police what we yeah. do on the water are each other. If I see Brian Thrift as close as he is as a friend of mine breaking That's a rule. That's actually a rule. I, I think it's rule it in is every a rule. league. It's, a, it's you, a rule. If you see a perceived violation, it's your duty to report. <clears throat> Alright, so, and let, and let me back up and say this. So, Upshaw assuming that there was a rule violation, reported it to the tournament director, as he should. Period. End of story. If you think otherwise, you should never fish in tournaments if you're not going to turn somebody in for potentially breaking a rule. Now, let me go ahead and say this also. I was at Winyaw Bay fishing a Bassmaster uh, Elite Tournament a couple years ago, 2019, 2020. Drew Cook came through a what I thought was a no-wake zone on pad. He ran through there. I called Lisa. Uh, it might have not been Lisa. It might have been Tripp. No, it was Lisa. I think Lisa had taken over. And I, and I said, look, I think Drew Cook just violated a rule. I think he blew through a no-wake zone. Well, there was a sign on the bank that said, you're responsible for your wake, and I think there was a buoy out there that said the same thing. Yeah. The locals on the bank had told me it was no wake. All right. Bottom line, it was not no wake. It was you are responsible for your wake, which means if you blow through there and you damage something, you can be held responsible. Right. It was not a no wake zone. Gotcha. All right. I turned Drew in because I thought he broke a rule. I was wrong. 
I went up to Drew Cook in the bag line that day, said, Drew, that was me that turned you in. I apologize. You know, I I was misinterpreting. You were just doing what you thought I was, was doing right. what I thought was right. right. And, I, and I've never really told that story on here. Yeah. But I was doing what I thought was right. Um, call it what it is, but that is the only way that we hold up that we are able to hold up our integrity of this sport is by policing ourselves and policing the other guys that we're competing against. Now, we do have marshals and fans and people watching and spectators. I got another thing. ad. What's well, okay. It'll, it'll go away in a minute. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. He's I can't see nothing. these ads now. <laughs> I can't see nothing. Just <laughs> I mean, I've never seen, seen, seen it do this before soon. either. It's okay. Oh, I got another ad, and it said starting soon also. See, yours is doing but, but it. No, but no, it's still, it's still, it's, we're still live. We're still rocking. I know, but I can't see nothing. That's what I'm saying. Oh, well, that's okay. You don't need to see us. I'm right here. I can't You're see right the there. feed either. <laughs> oh, I got the feed. That ain't a problem. How do you get the feed? The feed's right here. I'm looking at it. Well, oh, hit the little X. Well, that's there what I did bottom. last time. No, the bottom, the top right. Just hit the X. Feed should come back. Is it there? Yeah, the feed come back, but now I don't have that's us. That's okay. Don't worry about us. Until like until everybody says the video stopped, then we're we're good. We're good. Um, I'm restarting. Close yeah, the, the ad deal is 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 kind of weird tonight though. For yeah. real, like, we've never seen ads pop up that much. But Maybe that means we're doing something. <laughs> Does that I mean we're doing something? It's messing with me. Obviously, yeah. if you haven't noticed. It's messing with me. Something <laughs> terrible. Um, all right. So that I mean that's really all I got to say about the DQ deal. Y'all like if you do something wrong, you get turned in. In the story, you know, no big deal. Brian fessed up to what he did was wrong. Yep. You know, which was the right thing that he you know for him to do. Um, he was punished for it in return. In the story, all this other extra excess drama and stuff is is pointless. Yeah. It's pointless. I mean, unless somebody's out there pulling fish out of a basket and it needs to be blown up worldwide, like you know, it is what worldwide. it is. But. We uh let's oh that's good to know. What Ryan, you you, you missed out on my jersey. But we donated a, a, a signed jersey for the St. Jude's charity auction, and um, did you bid on it? I mean, it went. It, it said it went for four forty five. He said next year he hopes, but um, oh, we'll def, they'll, def, they'll definitely be another one out there next year. I can promise oh, yeah. you, that you can bid on. Uh, all right, the James Watson deal, y'all. The suspension. I cannot tell you, and I'm sure Brian too. How many texts oh, yeah. and, like, Instagram and Facebook messages about, hey, did you know what Watson did to get suspended? Hey, do you know? Well, look, unless you've been, like Brian said, unless you've been living under a rock for the past, like, year, like, you, you probably have a pretty good idea what Watson was was was, yeah, was doing. If you, if you follow Watson on social media, you, you've got a good idea. Now, right or wrong, you know, that's that's neither here nor there. I think the bottom line is, is – um, I do think the punishment was extremely harsh. I think suspending the dude until 2026, basically just abruptly ending his career, was uh, was pretty ridiculous. Um, I like James. James is a friend of mine. James is a good dude. Um, you know, he was a military man. He was actually a drill sergeant. Um, very honest individual. You know, wears his heart on his sleeve. He's, he's just a – he's a good guy. And I think he was fed up with a lot of the BS that was coming from one – particular person as opposed to you know 12 or 14 and uh, he kept pushing he kept pushing the limitations of that so yeah um he uh um i don't know somebody said that the the, the straw that broke the camel's back was probably the coloration he had i, I think that was i think that was a lot <laughs> in his last yeah. hashtag fbd yeah. apparel yeah uh, I which, think his color selection was. But I so mean, as a marketing, he's going to sell a lot of apparel. Oh yeah, no doubt. So he, I mean, hey, hey, James, James is great, great at social media. He's he, but did he? <laughs> so he was selling out at the classic. Oh yeah. But was he selling out at Redcrest? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay, I I, was, I didn't know the answer to I, that. I, so. I didn't see anything at Redcrest. I was working the Fitzgerald booth for two days, and I didn't see anything there. Yep. Um. Oh yeah, Ryan. That's that's another topic we I forgot to. <laughs> that's another oh, suspension. Yeah. Golly, I forgot about that one. We got so much going on. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the suspension with Watson, y'all. You know, you kind of. Yeah, Mike Harris. That's right. Uh, Upshaw. Upshaw. I text Andrew actually after he did that live on YouTube, and, and Brian didn't watch any of this stuff, so he didn't even know what I'm talking about. But um, he he handled that very professionally and did that the right way. 
when on the other side of things it not necessarily was done the right way. Um, but yeah, that's, so what was the rule they actually disqualified him? It with? was unsportsmanlike conduct is what they hit him okay, with. So basically, and he admitted he intentionally blew out. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't like he well, trolled the motor over to bed. It was like yeah, yeah. back and forth. I, I've seen people blow like dirty the water up to try to back off and not sight oh, fish them. But. I've accidentally done that before. Oh, I have but, too. But it was more of an intent. And he admitted to intentionally doing it. Like he yeah. intentionally um, went back and forth, turned his trolling motor multiple yeah. times, you know, trying to make it to where nobody yeah. could see it. So, um, but yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's that. Yes, I think Chuck. I gotta recheck our rules. Um, hopefully, I mean, you know, I hope this never applies to somebody. But if you can be DQ'd, if you don't report a violation, you see. Um, <clears throat> now, I'll tell you a specific. I think I've talked about this on before, but back in the FLW days when we had co-anglers, I was fishing a tournament on Lake St. Clair, and I was in Canadian water. My co-angler, Canadian police, rolls up on us. Oh, I remember that. You remember this? Oh, yeah, there was, that happened to several people. Yep. So Canadian police rolls up on us, checks our Canadian license. Back. They check my Canadian license, which I had. My co-angler, good kid, but he's a high school kid, 17 years old, from Georgia. I think his dad had driven him up there. They were staying. He was fishing as a co-angler. Oh, here we go again. And he, and he did not have his license for the Canadian waters we were in. They made him throw all his fish back. He was DQ'd for the day, basically. I'm in Canada. I don't have cell service, okay? I'm 20-something miles from takeoff. We get back to check in, and Bill, Bill before I could even say anything to Bill Taylor, Bill Taylor pulls me aside. Bill, Bill by the way, I love, great oh, guy, yeah. phenomenal tournament director, and uh, <coughs> I've said this before, I don't ever wish that job on anybody. <laughs> we got a lot of funny Bill. <coughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Bill pulls me aside. He said, well, Matt, he said, you... uh." You messed up. He's like, you don't, you know, your 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 co-angler got DQ'd for no fishing license, and you didn't report it immediately. I said, Bill, I said, I'm going to tell you right now. I said, 99.9% of the time, I would do that, and if you want to DQ me for this, you can. I said, but I'm going to tell you why. I said, I'm 20-something miles from takeoff. Yeah. I don't have cell phone service, and I'm not fishing for a living to babysit, too. I said, my co-angler, it was his fault. It was on him. I said, I would have had to ride back into U.S. waters, try to find somewhere I had cell service, then call you and then go back fishing, which would have taken a minimum of 30 to 45 minutes out of my day. I said, if you think that's fair and right to DQ me for that, then go ahead. And he didn't, which you can argue either way because rules are rules. I get that. But, again, co-angers were co-angers, pros were pros, and that should never cross over and one gets punished because the other one screwed up. You know, that's the way I look at it. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you could have tried to call him and say, look, Bill, on my phone, I tried to call you, you didn't answer. Oh, no, I, I couldn't. It was like that SOS or whatever, yeah. you know, so I didn't even have service. Um, and this, again, this was like 12 years ago oh, when, yeah. you know, cell phones aren't near as good as what they are now. But um, No. All right, the the boat wreck. Yeah, so the, the boat wreck Wasn't there suspension. there two of them in that tournament, too? Yeah, <laughs> there I think was. Only yeah. one was accidental. Two, the two that got banned for a year, I think that was kind of on purpose. I yeah. think that's the reason for the ban. <laughs> Rusty, I agree with that comment. He said, how you get suspended for the rest of the year for nearly killing someone, but get suspended for nearly two years for talking about one of the owners of the company? <laughs> that's one of the things that make you... <laughs> 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 you know, things mm. that make you go... Wasn't that a, a hip-hop song I or something? I think it was. Way Th- back then. Things that make back you go... Back huh? early 90s. <laughs> <laughs> that, that could be a T-shirt, yeah. too. So yeah. I know uh, I've seen a video someone posted on uh, Instagram of the <laughs> boat wreck and... I guess it was two guys in the lock yep. coming out of a popka, <coughs> and like you could hear one of them in the video. Oh say, yeah, say, it's a bad deal. Say, you know, hold on, cause close your run. eyes. Yeah, close your eyes. Hold on, we're gonna run it, dude. I listened to that video, and that's here, bad. He's he, probably gonna get some big trouble. Leave, like in a civil bingo. Suit. Here's a bad part about that video and the evidence in that video is the dude. This was pre-planned. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. Oh, he knew yeah. it was gonna be dangerous. He'd already told his co-anger, you know, you better close your eyes or whatever he said. Then he takes off down through there, and he basically runs a boat over. Yeah. More or less. Plows him over. Plows him over. Bad deal. <coughs> Thankfully, Luckily, nobody got seriously, seriously injured right. or killed. <coughs> that, but he is suspended. He's suspended for the rest of the year, um, obviously for reckless endangerment or whatever you want to call that. 
Um, he's probably got bigger problems, like Thrift said, uh, based on all the evidence that, that yeah. we've seen that was public information on all over the social media now. So um, <clears throat> you uh, – all right. So we talked suspensions. We talked DQ. Yeah. Um, what else we got? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Debbie said if you were in that pond and there were three spawners on the bank and the guy drove – over all the fish, you cannot catch them. You'd go crazy. Well, if it, if it was intentionally done. If he just done, drove over them because yeah, yeah, yeah. he didn't see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that yeah. Ain't no there, big there's, there's difference in, you know, um, yeah. being doing that intentionally and then accidentally doing it. Because we've all accidentally blown over a bed yeah. fish or blown I've one out. I've had bed fish before that I wanted to <laughs> stab and throw up on the bank. <laughs> I didn't do it. Because obviously you to. didn't catch them, right? Right. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just throw my rod at it like a javelin. Pin it to the bottom. Yeah, I didn't. Ryan said twelve years ago, to. when I was mentioned twelve years ago, talking about that FLW event at St. Clair, said twelve years ago when, when um, when he had the same iPhone. No, I, oh, has now. I got I got a fourteen <laughs> now, Ryan. I've had it for like three months too. Mm. I've had it long enough. I didn't crack the screen on it one time. Yep. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> anything you want to mention about Redcrest? Because I know this is old news, y'all. Everybody knows Dustin basically blew just it away. blew it away. Yeah. Um, he had like the perfect plan and executed it flawlessly. Yeah. Um, obviously, a lot of knowledge on that place. I was impressed with the uh, the high school kid that did so well. Because you know, I mean, oh yeah, you know, he, he yeah, was running he the, nearly made the top ten. Yeah, yeah, he was running the forward facing sonar deal and yep. and all that. Which obviously, that was a, so I learned something in that event. Teach us. That's what we're I, here for. I'm teaching myself, too. Yeah, you and me both teach so, me well, something. Well, I ain't going to say I learned something because I didn't learn that much, but I realized that <clears throat> fish don't do what they're supposed to do all the time. So let me run this by you. It's the, third week, <laughs> it's the third week of March. You're just now figuring that out? You've known that your whole life. Third week of March, water's 65 degrees. I knew the spots were going to be the, the winning deal with the forward-facing thing. But I'm thinking they're going to be in pockets because that's where supposed fish are supposed to be this time of year. So I get in there with my hummingbird mega live, and I get in a pocket the first day of practice, and I catch 15 or 20, two, two and a half pounders real quick. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. And there's another ad. But anyways, okay. I go down there. Oh, first day of the event, I'm running down through there. I come through the narrows, deepest part of the lake. And all the boats are lined up out in the middle of the lake right through the narrows. And I'm trucking down to my pocket where I caught them. And I'm like, uh-oh, I done messed up. I go down to my pocket and I catch like 30 fish doing the forward-facing deal and catch one scoreable. And they're just lighting them up out there in 30 to 60 feet of water. <laughs> so, does that make any sense? Why is that? Do well, fish just not go to the bank anymore? You're, uh, so we experienced that at Toledo Bend. So what was crazy is we had the perfect storm weather-wise right. for fish to flood the bank why of Toledo. That, like, why is that happening? That makes no sense. So it was dominated offshore in y'all's event at Toledo. That was a little different, though. It was a little, yeah, still, it was a little still, bit colder. Little well, when bit we got earlier. there, dude, it was like warm and trend, yeah. big moon, and right. everybody's like, oh, licking their lips. They're going to the bank. They're going to the bank. And guess what? The bank beaters got their brains beat in. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't even know if there was a top 50 Made exclusively well, on I the bank. I see Jordan Lee. He caught some shot. No, he caught eighty-five percent of he weighed in off the bank. Yeah, but I did see him catch some like shallow. I remember one. That might have been, <laughs> that might have been all it was. was one. Anyway, uh, I was proud of him. Yeah, I was proud yeah. of him. But I watched a little bit of it the first <clears> day, and it showed Hackney flipping bushes and mats in the back of housing. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, that's nice. And then at the end of the day, he's yeah. got 12 pounds. 12 pounds. <laughs> he's in last place. And I'm Christy like, fished out the first day. Caught, stupid now. Yeah, caught about 12 pounds. <laughs> uh, Brian said it first here. He said, fishing's stupid now. It is. Um, I did see uh, a, a question for you about, which this is an interesting question. You may not have any insight on it. Can Smoke give some insight on the guys not suspended from the BPT? How does everyone other than worldwide feel about things over there? Say that one more time. I was reading another question. Where's can, that? Can you, uh, it's by Keith Wood. It's up just a little ways, not too far, though. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I hadn't really talked to a lot of guys. I talked to Luke Clawson probably more than anybody. Y'all room together, and, don't you? Yeah, 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 me and Luke room together. And it's, I mean, I'm not going to say it's not concerning. Like, 
We need something positive. Let me just say that. We hadn't had a lot of positives in the last year or two, so looking forward to something positive one day. Fingers crossed. <laughs> like this. There's your insight, Keith. That's my insight. Yeah, that's pretty good insight. I'm scared to say anything, honestly. <clears throat> <laughs> so, yeah, I, that's the most honest answer I've heard. And honestly, if I was a BPT guy, I'd I mean, probably, you, I'd probably, you don't know hey, where to stop. You want to write it down and I'll say it. I'm I just, mean, I'm you, just kidding. Like, I'm scared to say anything, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, you're right. Yep. It's uh, it's not worth having to pay a fine, that's for sure. Right. That's silly. Um, that's interesting. Uh, to talk about Chris Lane dropping a bass on the deck, threw it back, made a cast, and caught himself out. Because his marshal didn't see him and gave himself a one-minute penalty Well, uh, instead of a two-minute. Well, I don't know what the penalty is for a fish violation, throwing a fish back, um, not below the rail. It's two minutes. Okay. So, yeah, any, any penalty that's not like a flagrant penalty is two minutes. <clears throat> so if your marshal misses it, but then you turn yourself in, should it be half of what the real penalty is? No, I, thought, I would imagine it still be two <laughs> I would imagine I just it would still be two minutes. I just wonder. I don't know. I don't know if Chris admitted to his marshal of what he did and then he gave himself a one minute penalty. Yeah. But his marshal didn't see it. I that I don't know how to answer that I, question. I don't know either. I didn't <laughs> see it all go down. So yeah. I guess they, they, he must have had a live camera when it happened or something. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Um, all right. I did not see Todd Castledine's April Fool's episode, but apparently I need to. I didn't either. I need to watch that. How was your trip to Michigan, by the way? Oh, it's good. So um, that was my first time ever going up to DNR Sports. You know, it's uh, Kevin's brother, Randy, and yeah. Jonathan Van Dam's store. Yep. Great place. Great place if you're in that area. They got everything. Like I call it a place. It's a complex. Like, it's, it's pretty unique. I've heard so, good things about it. I've never seen yeah, it or been great there. Great store, great people. <clears throat> Had a lot of people turn out for the seminars. I did a seminar on how to skip a jig with my new skipping rod. It's a 7-foot-1 Fitzgerald fishing rod. It's a 7-1 XL skipping rod. Wait, you have a skipping rod that's over 7 foot? That's yeah, we I introduced a new one this year. Oh, what made you go over 7 foot? You've always been like a 6'10 guy. So I use a 6'9", but everybody's not the same height. Everybody's ah! not like yeah, me. I like it. So we always said that. So we inter I introduced a longer rod I like for it. the taller guys that, you know, are off the water a little bit farther. They can handle that 7 foot, water, seven foot 1 rod and not hit the rod tip on the water. Like we always talk about how important <laughs> that is, how you, how you match that up to your height, because that is extremely right. critical. Exactly. Um, so, but it, it was a great turnout. I had a lot of fun. Uh, myself, Jonathan, Kevin, Greg Hackney, Casey Ashley was there. Uh, Cooper Gallant came in the second day of the day I left. Crew. So, And Ron Nelson, uh, one of the local Michigan guys, has been tearing it up for the last three or four years. So it, it was a very good show. I had a lot of fun. Tim, my, everybody's telling me we need to watch Castle Dunn's April 1 video. Said it's 10 <laughs> minutes well spent. I'm going to check that out tomorrow. Right, I'm going to have to watch I'll be it. in the shop prepping a Some, few uh, things for Robbie Dye sent me a thing about, I guess, Wired to Fish post something about a LIV bass tour. Oh, I yesterday. saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's what yeah. we need. <clears throat> yeah, we need some salty money we, we in, our, in our sport for sure. Start a bass fishing trail. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, the TAA, if anybody uh, – was paying attention. That was kind of cool. I saw that kicked that off today cool. on Lake Lanier. Yeah. Um, got, I've got, I know about, shoot, I know half the field because I know several of the locals that are fishing it down there, and I know yeah. basically all the pros. Yeah, um, a lot of pros. I know Gussie, Jared Lintner, yep. uh, Chris Andy Morgan's fishing it. Chris Johnston dropped 24 pounds down there on him a day. Oh, yeah. Jared Littner dropped 24 yeah, pounds. I saw that. That's a big old bag of fish at Lanier. That, that's a big old bag of fish. And I'm assuming those were big largemouth. I watched some of the weigh-in, but I wasn't paying attention to species and things like that. But I didn't here's, get to watch the weigh-in. <laughs> here's, here's why you better be scared of Chris and Corey. And that, this is my money would be on Chris at this everything. point. Well, so I, I would put them up against anybody in the world for sight fishing. Now, oh, beside yeah, the point, this is what a lot of people may not know. And, and, and it's funny they do this because they do fight like cats and dogs sometimes. Yeah, they're, really? know, they're brothers, yeah. <laughs> um, not, 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 not really. Not really. They just argue, you know, but um, that's what brothers do, right? Yeah. But I, I think they still do it. I, I know they used to, but they used to split all their winnings. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so. Those two guys in this tournament are extremely dangerous, right? Oh, yeah. Because cause Corey caught 18-something a day, so he's not out of it, but his brother's got 24. Well, they only had four hours of practice or five-hour practice running around. Right. That's all they got. So whatever Corey's finding, 
tomorrow, if he doesn't think he can make that top 12, he's giving it all to Chris. Right. And Chris is going to go out there and try to catch him on Sunday. Right. Or whatever the third day is. I, I say Sunday because that's when our championship days are normally. But right. But championship day will be Thursday. Be Thursday, yes. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Um, but, yeah. And they make a cut after two days, I think. Yeah, they cut it's, the top 12. Deal. Like, I would love to have fished it. <clears throat> and if I had had a little more time between Same events, here. I would have definitely fished I, it. Um, I already had the DNR thing scheduled on my calendar, and I didn't want to get straight back from Michigan, see the family on Sunday, and then leave the next day to go to Lanier, and then have to leave Lanier Thursday and go to Del Hollow. And that's too much from home. Yeah, I, so that's the number one reason a buddy of mine called me, want me to fish it. And I said, look, I said, I, I've got like 12 days at home between the Classic and a two-week swing in Florida. Right. I yeah. said, it's Easter. The girls are on spring break. Yes. Got to squeeze in a little turkey hunt. And, uh, that I was just, probably the main thing. I, well, half a day of turkey hunting wasn't really the main reason. but um, <laughs> That's all he was thinking about, though. I know. No. Don't, that, don't, uh, don't lie. Don't lie. And I, bottom line is, I, like, we, we we spend so much time from home, and this would have been like fish this tournament, leave from there, go to Florida, so I'd have yeah. been gone for three weeks in a row. And then, and, uh, like, I'm so one-track-minded, i got to have my stuff ready for the next Correct. I'm, oh, dude. Like, like I w- if I would have fished Lanier and made it to the third day, like, I would have probably <laughs> missed the first day of practice at Del Hollow because I've been wanting to get stuff ready for Del Hollow. Yeah. I'm just weird like that. Yep. Well, you're right. NC Shooter said takes a special fisherman to drop 5K on attorney. Um, I think that's yeah. got more with it. But here's the thing. Like, it's 100% payback. Okay, yeah. there's a lot of circuits out there that aren't even close to 100% payback. Most of your true. team circuits aren't close to 100% payback. All your AAA level events, single A, double A, under the BPT, MLF, Bassmaster Opens, all that stuff, none of that's 100% payback. Yeah, probably um, the only ones that are – I, I would imagine more than 100% are the Bass Pro Tour yeah. and the Elites. Yeah, series. the Elites and the BPT Tour both pay over 100% yeah. for sure. Um, but that's that's a really hard feat to, you know, to accomplish because of the, uh, um, you know, the sponsor money and the dollars and expense, how expensive it is to run one of these deals. So um, it's 100% payback down there, first place. There's 47 boats in it, I think, that the guys that got in it. It is uh, 65000 for yeah. first. Pretty good payout for the top five. I think fifth's like twenty grand, something like oh, that. Yeah. And then sixth through twelfth, I believe, is ten thousand dollars, something like that. So okay. you double your money. So they're paying one in every four places. Okay. Yep, basically. So that, that's not bad. Yep. Um and, and, and I, I think can see it taking off though. Oh yeah. So basically if y'all don't know about Tour and Anglers Association, T A A, it was uh um so the whole gist of it is no forward facing sonar. No three sixty. No oh, is that true? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay, no I didn't know no three sixty. No forward facing so, sonar. So two D mapping and Side and down scan? I think you can use side and down scan. Okay. Yeah. But no 360, no four phases sonar. Um, you only have a five-hour practice period. That's it. Just yep. So basically half a day um, to ride around the lake. Now, I do think that they might want to look at that and, and adjust it to one full day if you're going to places that are chock full of timber and have dangerous boat lanes, yeah. things like that, just for safety reasons. But I, I, the one day of practice, I think, is really cool. Um, I'd like to see it go to a full day, though, like you said. A full day, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so it's uh, – God, my dang, I got I got the same problems you uh-huh. had earlier. So talk junk about me. I mean, what it's live, and I, I see the. I mean, you still running over there, right, Tyler? Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know what my phone's that, doing, dude. It, mine's got mad at me. I hadn't even. You We're running pristine ad. over here. I can still I can still uh, see comments. Did you get so that's another all ad? Huh? Did you get another ad or something? I've had ads. But, I hadn't had any ads in a while. Oh, I think yeah. they finally got mad at me. Quit. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, kind of a neat deal that they're doing, and and yeah, well, I'm like Brian. Like Brian said, I could. Oh I could, yeah, Chuck made a good point about it. Also, the no waypoints in the TAA event. Correct before practice, so no, you can only you have, can't have any preloaded waypoints correct. in your grass. Yep. So you got to clear that. And, I wonder um, how they do it. I guess they they make them practice when they practice. They got to go out from a centralized location, whatever the tournament ramp, and somebody checks their grass before they go out, or something like that. I seen like yeah, pictures. They, they were going through like everybody's boats and checking everything. Yeah, they were yeah. checking them. Yeah. Um, is there an off limits period for that? I don't know. That's a good. Either question. way, I, you can't <laughs> have. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's there had to be some type. Of yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's on the website. But um, oh, uh, is Blockett fishing it? You know, that's kind of funny because he is not fishing it. But this is everything that he preaches every day. So I'm kind of surprised he's not. To be honest with you, that is true. That's a good point. I mean, this is like. Right. This yeah, is like as old school tournament as it gets. He would have paid two entry fees. <laughs> like you would think. Why, 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 would, he, why would he do that? 
do what? Why would he pay two entry fees? Just because it's no forward facing. Oh, because he's so excited. Like, I'm going to enter twice. And he's like, I'll win, you know, because this is what I do. <laughs> like, lights out. It's, it's in the bag, baby. Um, all right, the classic. Congrats to old Hamner. Justin's a good dude. I don't know Justin really well, but, I, you know, I know him. You know, we speak and, and things like that. And he's a he's a good guy. He deserves it. Fished his butt off, as, as we all did. And, uh, and yeah, man, it, it's, it's a life-changing event. And um, – Hamner came home with it, so uh, happy for him, happy for his family, and uh, he said he doesn't have to cut grass anymore. He said he hopes he never cuts another yard, and I said, I don't think you. my grass needs to be cut. I wish you hadn't mentioned that. That's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I know a guy. Oh, yeah, and he called Chet. Yeah, there we go. Mo Butter Lawn Care. Uh, Yeah, Shout out to Mo Butter Lawn Care. (laughs) All right, we – yeah, the classic man. It was it was grand. <clears throat> I would uh, actually save money paying somebody to cut my grass because I wouldn't have to buy Zyrtec and hundred percent all that stuff. Oh, you're thinking you're thinking about the uh, allergy medicine you no, have to yeah, buy. Like I'm How about be, the eight thousand dollar lawnmower? When I cut grass, well, I've already got one of them. Oh. I've had it for several years. But when I cut grass for like two weeks, it's Sudafed, Zyrtec, Benadryl. Like it's bad. You uh um yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Chuck Fish. So that was the one. That was the only argument I had about the TAA. And I don't. I won't drop names, but the guy who called me to fish it, I said, you know, this is. I said this sounds like a pretty cool deal, right? <clears throat> and I said, but you know, five thousand dollar entry fee, five hour Steep practice. Entry fee to fish against. Well, so so I didn't know that at the time. This is what I said. And that was my first point. I said five thousand dollar entry fee. You know, five hours of practice, basically no practice. You know, five hours to ride around. And especially if you've never been there. And I said, well, you know, I don't mind the five-hour practice period. I said, I don't want to go put my money in the pot with 50 locals during potentially peak spawn where they know where all the fish spawn year after year in the best pockets and all that right. stuff. And it's going to take me at least a day yeah, to try to figure it out. that's one time a year you could, you could run into the right area and be good. Well, yeah, but you got to run into the right area first. You know, yeah. like you got to get – so long story short is, is I was told, no, this is not for locals. This is for touring pros only. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, they could not gather enough touring pros. Right. And I looked at the field today, and there's like 47 boats, and I think like 30 of them are locals. I mean, maybe I not that many. But it, like oh, I, put, if I was a local and they let me yeah. in, I'd jump in it too, 100%. Yeah. Like you put one on Norman, like we're going to get in it. Right. But I could see a little bit of frustration. But but there again, they got, you know, 60% of the field's locals, and the two first and second place are both <laughs> touring pros. So, you know, there you have it. But – um. Neat tournament, neat format. Uh, interesting to see how it plays out. They they ran a live uh, a live weigh in today on a, a yeah, Bass Three Sixty Five, and uh, I turned it on and there was there was no glitches in the weigh in. It, it you know it was pretty smooth. Um, guys looked like uh, Hank Cherry was fishing it. I saw Hank, I saw some guys I didn't know were there. I didn't know Hank. Um, Hank's down there. Brandon Polinick's fishing it. Andy Morgan's fishing it. The Johnston brothers are fishing it. Jared Littner's fishing it. James Watson's fishing it. Worldwide's um, there. Worldwide's there in in the flesh. And they crushed them, dude. It's like a uh, 16 pounds. Is there's 47 boats, and I think 16 pounds was about 39th or 40th place. Oh, I guarantee it. Yeah. So that place obviously is chock full of three pounders. But I saw there was a I seven pounder weight in. Four pounders. There's a seven pounder <laughs> weight in. Several sixes, bunch of fours and fives. You know, yeah. a lot of big spots, some big large mouth. And uh, yeah, it looks like a fun tournament. Looks yeah, like- that like Lanier, the big largemouth, I often get overlooked there because there, there's there may not be as plentiful as the spots, but there's some big old largemouth. Well, and, and they're not they're not near as vulnerable twelve months out of the year, so they don't play quite quite as often. It seems like right, but there are giant largemouth. Like they catch some eight nine pounders in yeah. there. Um, there are some giant ones in there. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, back to the Classic at Grand. I didn't do much of a wrap-up on the Classic, but a, a good tournament overall. I ended up 15th. Um, obviously, if you don't win that tournament, you you, you stay a little frustrated. But um, I always stay frustrated in practice at the Classic because it's one of those deals, like, if you're not on five-pounders to win, like, you just stay frustrated. Yeah, like, that's it. You're like, I, oh, I'm going to fish to cash a check. Who cares? It's the Classic. You know, you're there to win. Um but I, I got – I mean, I, I never turned my forward face of sonar unit on, actually, during the whole tournament. And uh, maybe that was my demise, Brian. <laughs> I guarantee it was your demise. There's uh, no maybe. But I was, I was run, I, yeah, I was running a pattern, cranking <laughs> little corners and uh, flipping the jig. Patterns can't beat FFS. Patterns can't beat FFS. No. <clears throat> New T-shirt. New T-shirt. New T-shirt. Tell Swindle. Tell Swindle. <laughs> no, we need to make it. <laughs> 
Well, make us some. Is it LTF? Yeah. <laughs> patterns do not do patterns do not beat FFS. <laughs> period. We know End the story. <laughs> That's interesting. Binkwood said he thinks Van Dam's first major win might have been on Lanier, and he turned that a large mouth. Cool. I like it. Van uh, Dam did that a lot. Like I know when he won at Smith Lake, he won on smallmouth. <clears throat> Smith Lake in uh, Virginia. Smith. I'm about to say that's Smith not Mountain. Smith Lake in Alabama. Yeah, Smith <clears throat> Mountain Lake. There, uh, there's actually Canterbury called a smallmouth in Grand during practice. Did he really? Yeah. So there's some up, up the rivers. I didn't know that. I asked Christy about it, and he said they, they're not really ever a factor. They're those long, skinny ones. You know, they don't weigh much, and. Um, but that that tournament, by the way, I, you know, I've heard some up and down stories about Grand. Randy's quick to give his opinion on Grand about it being, you know, a crap hole now, yada yada yada. It's really not. Like, it still has the forage in it. It still has it still has the fish in it. But it doesn't. I think it's missing. It's like it's missing an age class or missing two. Missing a year yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. And two. and that's simply because of. You know, you get super high water, super low water during yeah. a spawn or two, and that's typical, right? But I call. I know I caught over 100 in three days of the tournament. Right. Well over 100. Like, like it's, it's on pace to two or three years down the road. It's going to be back Correct. To as long as those day. fish yeah. grow like they're supposed to grow. And then it, it's not lacking for shad, yeah. gizzard shad. It's chock full of every species you can imagine. I caught them. Now, I did run my forward face of sonar during practice. Oh, yeah. I didn't during the tournament because I didn't think I could compete for the win unless I was doing other stuff. Right. So, I caught drum. I caught hybrids. I caught giant white bass. Dude, I got on the school. This is bad. I got distracted by white bass during the classic practice, the pre-practice period. It's fun, though. I sat back there near the Honey, Cut, <laughs> Honey Creek Bridge and chased them down with a dirt bait. There was like a thousand of them out there. Uh, and so, there were two-pounders, dude, and you know how fun they yeah, are. I did that at Murray last year when we were there for the BPT. Like every, It seemed like every pocket I'd go in to look for bed and fish or whatever. Stripers? Oh, like huge schools of hybrids. Oh. Stri- <laughs> like just acres of them. But it's like every pocket I went in, and then I stopped and catch seven or eight of them and fight them for five minutes each and before you know it you've wasted 40 minutes catching five and you've, you've seven torn out three or four hard baits hooks all kind of stuff yeah, yeah. destroyed and everything learned nothing <clears throat> yep all right um yeah so grand is chock full of fish but i do feel like like 10 years ago 15 years ago when you went to grand it seemed like if you caught 25 bass you had like 15 that were between two and a half and three and a half pounds yeah like the now, average fish was a three pound that's right now i feel like if you catch 25 bass you have to catch 25 more to have 16 pounds you know and that's just that's what i that's what i experienced and canterbury was experiencing a lot of the same thing a lot of little bitty like a lot of 11 to 13 inch fish yeah. lots of of See, that's, that's weird fish. because when we were there for Red Crest, what, two years ago? Yeah, it was only two years ago. It wasn't like that. Like the, Y'all were there a little earlier, but y'all weren't catching numbers of fish, though, right? You were just catching, like, some solid ones. Yeah, like a, like you'd get 10 to 20 bites a day, but two-thirds of them were, you know, two to three-and-a-half pounders. Okay. Like, and that was a touch earlier, so, yeah. and, and I, you know, who knows, man. I, again, like, I was doing stuff that I thought, was the way to catch big fish cranking and and you know i caught some on a 2.5 i caught some on a, a bunch of different crankbaits and, and, a, and a half ounce jig flipped a half ounce jig around and dude i i didn't know if i was going to swing on a jig and catch a three and a half pounder or swing on a jig and catch a 12 or 11 incher and i mean they you know it yeah. was just it was just odd to me and and that's the thing about grand is it gets in your head because when you're getting that many bites you catch 10 or 15 12 inches in a row i mean your next pitch your next skip with that jig can be a six pounder exactly and then you're going to be all out yep. of sorts and i got more confidence catching a big bag on a jig than i do anything and i'm yeah. sure you've caught quite a few big bags on jig i know you've caught quite a few big bags on jig it's been a long time but i used to yeah chuck so that was an option that we had there uh hamner was talking about said he fished the coldest water he could find to stay on the and larger pre spawn fish smart, dude. so that's something that a lot of people don't take into consideration when you're in a lake that lays out like grand <coughs> norman's like this hartwell's like this a lot of the big lakes that stretch way out have multiple river systems that yeah. feed them you can find fish that are in completely different stages and use that to your advantage based on your strengths yep. the weight of the fish like if you're in a like I, I you could go to ramsey you know a couple of weeks fish for all post spawners or you could go to maybe davidson or somewhere mid lake maybe fish for some pre-spawner still yeah you know something like that but it makes a big difference in in, in your five fish yeah. limit especially at the end of the day. on a lake like grand where you've got 
two extremes, <clears throat> polar opposites on each end of the lake. Very so, much. So from the you know the middle of the lake up, you you've got a lot of shallow flats, a lot of dirtier water. It's going to warm quicker. And then when you get down toward the lower third of the lake, you've got deep bluff banks. There's not a lot of flats, and obviously it stays colder. And you win classics there. <coughs> Somebody asked. They, Ryan asked he wanted to hear the story of the big old gobbler I shot Monday. Can I no, tell it, Ryan? We do not. Yes, tell us. Go ahead. <laughs> I, know, I, know you, I know you're dying to. I'm not really dying to, but um, I got to slip out in the South Carolina Monday and chase a big old gob. <laughs> shot him in the face. It was fun. There you go. The end of story. That's a good story. <laughs> That's a good story. <laughs> now, real quick, so I will tell you a funny story. So I walked, I walked about. Here we go. I walked, Thank I you, walked, guys. Thank look, you. I walked like 11,000 steps Monday to kill this bird, okay? <laughs> I just know that because my cell phone was in my pocket. So whatever 11,000 something of my steps are. And, yeah, I dude, I had was. been like, I had walked all over the place. I got on some birds early that morning, and they were hinned up real bad. They were actually still in, like, a big old flock, which is weird for this time of year down there. And Anyway, I broke off of them. And, dude, I, I wear muck boots hunting, you know. Yeah. I'm thinking about well, going to my AFCO rain boots that I wear. <laughs> I <laughs> see your post where you was talking about going to the. Yeah. Well, so I went back. To, dude, I had rub blisters on the back of my ankles, <laughs> and I was walking. I won't tell you exactly what it looked like I was walking out of the woods. Dude, it, it got hurt so bad I was walking on my tiptoes coming out of the woods. You, you got to wear thicker socks to get you some smaller Well, boots. I wore thin socks, but I'd also worn out the inner liner in my boots, I found yeah, out. So I've is. had these boots for years. And There you go. The only thing Cody I had, says the own clouds are the turkey killers. Right. So I learned two things. <laughs> First of all, don't. I mean, own clouds make some waterproof shoes that I actually have a pair for fishing. But they can't smell. Go barefooted. They make a new... Uh, that, Barefooted. They make a new boot now, a waterproof boot. On Cloud does. It's actually a good looking boot. I don't know I if it's good. I think I'm the only one that doesn't have a pair of them. <coughs> Dude, I'm telling you, it's, I don't it's, have any either. It's changed okay. my life. It's the us. most comfortable shoe I've ever. Now, the worst thing about an On Cloud sole, I'll tell you this right now, is that if you walk through a gravel parking lot, you're going to track 47 rocks into your house because oh, they, really? stick, they, they stick. They stick the into grip. the. Yeah, they yeah. stick into the grip underneath. But the only thing I had in my truck to change into was in my my white and green On Clouds. Perfect. And, well, you don't wear white when you're turkey hunting. Just FYI, Brian. You rub dirt on But them. <laughs> I covered them up with pine needles when I yeah, sat down. just get you a handful of mud. And... So they're extremely quiet while walking through the woods. I've seen the boys <laughs> on the hunting public actually take their shoes off and stalk deer in their socks because they're so quiet, you know? Yeah. Which is pretty cool. So I went I went back in in my own clouds. They got the Velcro? And uh, what? I, me and fours want to know. Do they got the Velcro? No, they don't have Velcro. Yeah. Mm-mm. But but you don't have to tie them either. You, you, you don't, don't have to tie them. Okay. They just slip on. They're like right. the the. You don't uh, want Velcro in the woods. You get cuckabers stuck to the Velcro. Yeah, they got stretchy game. laces. They got the stretchy laces, yeah. you know, and oh, they're just yeah. tied in knots. And like the hay dudes. Yes, kind of yeah. like that. Gotcha. <laughs> Similar, but different. Uh, <laughs> so I go back in to this creek bottom. I hadn't been yet, and I, I hit the call a couple times, and and two of them fire off, and they're like a hundred yards away. Climb up on this ridge, call them in, shoot one of them. And when I shoot him, the other bird jumps on his buddy. You know, you, you ever seen this turkey hunting? So the dead one's flopping around, and for whatever reason, the other male goes crazy and jumps on him. Like fighting him. Like fighting him, yeah, yeah. like it goes crazy. I get up, I run over and get my turkey, pick him up by the neck. And this other turkey, dude, like I've, I've experienced other turkeys hanging around for a minute after the shot. But this other turkey, this other gobbler, sits there, and I got some video of it on my phone. And he walks around me for like two or three minutes. Yeah, putting. Tur- turkeys are dumb. They're easy to I'm kill. I'm holding this bird, and he's still flapping, flopping, yeah. flapping. His wings are flapping because I got him up by the neck now. He, the other one's thinking about helping him out. He's like, I'm hey, going to come hey, help this, you, buddy. This bird doesn't know what to do. And I kid you not, dude, <laughs> two or three minutes goes by. I take several different video clips. He's running around putting. He actually shot gobbles a couple times because I got my diaphragm in, my, my call still in. Yeah. And I yelped to him a few times, and it, he fires off in the middle of all the putting he's doing. Putting his alarm call, by the way, just so you know, oh, I Brian. Didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, I start walking out of the woods with this turkey. I throw him over my back, and this other turkey's like following you down like the trail, paralleling me, dude. <laughs> like through the woods, I can see him still. I could have shot this turkey 150 times in 10 minutes, dude. And finally, he just kind of moseys off, and I'm like, <laughs> <clears throat> and somebody told me the other day, like. You might have told me this one time. You said, dude, turkeys are stupid. You kill them whenever you want to, however they you are. want to do this. But you say that. And then you hunt them for about 20 years like I have been, and you realize it's not that they're smart. It's that they're, they're born scared, which that's what makes them so hard to kill. 
Because they have every predator. Every, every animal in the wild is like it. What? Except for like maybe a bear or a moose. Well, I mean, turkey has like 9,000 predators as they from the time they're born to the time yeah. they die. Like, so Everything it, eats turkey. I agree with that. <laughs> Except for me. Everything. I don't eat a turkey because they're nasty. You don't eat turkey? I hate turkey. Seriously? I hate turkey. So what kind of sub do you get? Ham, salami, pastrami. Okay. Anything but turkey. Got you. Interesting. Learned something. I taught you a, a turkey sound tonight. You salad. taught me something that, about you not liking the. Uh, well, I mean, I'll, I'll eat it, but I don't mean. If I go somewhere, I'm not ordering a turkey. I promise you that. Uh, Keith said of walking walking out of the woods. Oh, I got something interesting. Oh, uh, what's up, Tyler? Well, I know you hadn't because you don't watch any podcast. You may already know about it, but Mercer's podcast about Monday night, the week of the classic. You know anything about that? No, you're going to have to enlighten me. Oh, about Mercer getting thrown out of the casino? I didn't know anything about this. Oh, yes. He got thrown out of the casino? Oh, yes. There's, there's a, he talks about Does it on his podcast. Him? What was going on? Oh, he was a little intoxicated. Well, tipsy, oh, so he, he wasn't, like, beaten. He wasn't winning. Dude, you can't control nah, him. Nah, he said something. Man. But it, it's, you just got to go <laughs> listen to it. on that Canadian whiskey. You got to listen to it. To, it. It's hilarious. Ryan, I want that turkey nugget recipe. You're going to have to message me with that because I'm doing turkey nuggets Friday night, matter of fact, before I leave Saturday. He's already sent it to you, I think. Just go back on the feed. It was one of the like, first couple messages. Uh, you're going to have to message it to me because I might never find it on this feed again. Yeah, <laughs> Chuck, Chuck, it sounded Chuck good. I remember reading it. What's that? Chuck said it. Oh, always dropping f bombs. He got thrown out of the casino for dropping f bombs. Bet that happens every thirty seconds. Yeah, you gotta, get, you gotta get watching, listen to the whole story. He got. Chip <laughs> <laughs> said you had to do that just to get that access Canadian to some casinos. Canadian whiskey do weird things. <laughs> uh, thoughts on the Harris chain? Uh, all I know is that the reports are not great. From what I've gathered, uh, as far as how it's fishing this year, I think Apopka and Griffin have been really good. Uh, Harris, in particular, has not. That could change. Um, obviously, I'm going to try to keep them all honest when I go down there. I'm going to spend as much time as I can. On, I'm going to look at – I'll probably bounce around. We've got three days of practice, and I'll probably fish five different lakes in three days. So, that's my plan. That's a good plan. Good plan? It's a good plan. Yeah. But there's like seven lakes, though. Is there seven? Yeah, you know my roommate caught them in that horseshoe lake last year. Yeah, but that's like part of Dora. I count all that as one lake. Well, it's got like, a different name, and, Dora, it's, and it's connected and by a canal. That's all one lake. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so it's Dora, just smaller, through a yeah. canal into yeah. another opening. Like well, all it's the a other wide lakes. opening. It's like, <laughs> like 100 yards. Okay. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> well, te- if we want to get technical. Oh, I got we, another ad. We could call it all Harris because all the fish could swim from all the other lakes to Harris if they wanted to. Well, there's not a no-egg zone and a long canal and all that. So. Okay. Got it. That, I mean, <laughs> it's funny how as anglers, like, I'm sure you do it too. Like, you just have things that, like, you call a certain area of the lake. Like on Norman, I, if I say I'm fishing up the lake, like I'm talking about anything from marker 13 up to the dam, which is like 20 miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if I, say, if I say the lower end, I'm talking from like Governor's Island to the dam. Which I, is like I, if, I end up, <laughs> if I end up in a popka for some odd reason, I've never fished. Hey, I, I mean, heard the lock was broke. Well, it's like it breaks every tournament, dude. Yeah. So, so I guess the last we'll, was it the last yeah, day. We'll get a fresh report when we get down there, and obviously that that yeah. will go into our decision making on how we approach practice. But um, <coughs> yeah, that that lock has so, more so problems my than understanding any lock in the country. Is they put some manatee blockers or something, something to do with manatees on the lock from door to. And it broke pocket. the lock. And so now the lock takes like thirty something minutes to cycle, and only three boats can fit. That's all it's ever fit in there. Yeah, but it's it's, like, it's taking longer to cycle. Like oh. you just could do it in like ten or fifteen minutes. <clears throat> oh, and now with them manatee things, what? So I've if you're not it, boat one through ten, you might as well maybe not go. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to risk going down there and fishing for an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, I know one of my buddies fished, and the second day he went down there, and he didn't make it back in time for weigh in. Several guys didn't. Right. Yeah, from what I heard. Well, the boat accident probably had something to do with that with some people, but. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, Lakewood well. said just run the no wake zone. Others are doing it. Yeah, that's not something that I would be. Um, no, don't uh, ever run no wake zone. <clears throat> ever, ever. 
purposely anyway. Right. Are we, uh, I am not fishing the Thursday night or on Moss this week. Are you fishing it, Brian? No, no you're leaving I'm not Friday. Really fishing either. I've got to leave Friday morning to go to Dale Hollow for our third BPT event, and I'll be getting ready for that, hanging out with the family. Nancy said you can't prove what you saw. I'm trying to figure out what she's talking about. What I see. I'm not talking about, I don't know who she's talking about. I don't know talking about saying. me, you, I don't know. I can prove everything I saw. <laughs> Uh, Jody, I would have to agree with you that Ford Face and Sonar will play in Florida, yes. Um, I am excited about going to Florida in April just because I've never been there that time of year. I said that's the beginning of the year. You're going to catch more fish than you've ever caught in Florida in your life. Yeah, I'm going to go down there and now I'm going to get like five bites. No, huh? I'm just telling you. He just jinxed me. I'm done. No. We, uh, we do have a trivia question. Brian, is there anything you'd like to add to tonight's show? Glad to be back. This is a good show. We had a lot I thought it was pretty about. good. We got any que- anybody want to throw a late question at us? It's seven fifty six, and uh, we got time for a couple questions. If um, are y'all practicing Dale this weekend on the BPT, Brian? Uh, yes, we start practice Saturday. Practice Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Luckily, it's going to be in the thirty Saturday and Sunday, so we got that going for us. But it's the middle of April, and birds are chirping and. We'll see what happens. It's going to be fun. Dude, that's going to be an awesome tournament. It I, is going to be. I told Brian when, to when he said he's going to Del Hollow, I've never fished Del Hollow. So I've only been there once. I only know what, like, the the public reports and stuff are, that it's chock full of giant smallmouth that you can never weigh in in tournaments. Right. Yeah, because the they've got that slot. Right what's your there. minimum, by the way? Two pounds. Two pounds? Yeah. So y'all are going to crush them. Yeah, it's going to be really, really good. Like, there's no way around it, right? I don't see how – there's it could be bad. A way around it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even Thrift is saying they're going to crush them. I wonder if they'll be able to wave the slot with Be involved in the crushing of them. But <laughs> so I know this the is not. The top guys are going to crush them. <laughs> I know it's every fish counts, but so two days to make the knockout round. Just guess to make the knock. It's just top 10 now, right? Top 10 from each group? Yeah, top 10. All right. So 20 guys out of 80 guys. What's it going to take uh, to make top 20 for two days? I'm going to say somewhere in the. 35, 40 pound a day range. Oh, I thought you were going to say total. I was going to call BS no, on that no, one. No, no, no. Yeah, 35 okay. to 40 so a day. So 70 to 80 pounds. 70 to 80 pounds. I can see that, yeah. And I bet there'll be multiple. Mul- oh, yeah, I forgot about that, Chuck. Thank you. Shout out to my alma mater. Who? He has no idea what's going on. I promise you. Hey, do you know? do you know who's in the final four of the NCAA tournament? Can you name two teams – in the final four Wait, of the NCAA I see, I tournament. Seems, uh, uh, this is for him. Not somebody y'all. beat Duke. I know I seen that. Didn't he? Yes, yeah, somebody beat Duke. Who okay. beat Duke? I have no idea. I just know I seen somebody fussing about it. Because well, the <laughs> they lost. Well, that's what they do. I, I have no idea. I don't. Who won the ACC tournament this year? I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Okay. What's, can you name TV. can you name the best female player in college basketball? No. I don't watch TV. I don't hey, I don't watch basketball, but I can name that one. Brian, I mean Tyler. Now I have seen Tyler. something on uh social media about it. I can't name her, but I remember seeing Who something. Who she play for? I remember seeing something about uh L S U and Iowa and I remember seeing something about that. Which team? Is, I don't know. What team? Which, which she team? Plays is for she? Iowa. Not a boy. Yeah. All right. You're getting there. <laughs> He's getting there. So, I mean, <laughs> her name's Caitlin Clark. She set every record that's ever been in women's basketball. Well, good. Broke them all. And uh, and Ice Cube offered her five million dollars to come play in the Big Three. Did y'all see that? So I was like, so I was curious to see what the WNBA players make when he when he made that offer. I'm like, well. It averages like 140. Okay. I got of, of, of the of um. The WNBA, so I'm like, if for some oh, crazy wow. reason she could play both, which she might could. It's like 12 games, isn't it? Five million dollars for 12 games. Oh, oh wow. Well, I know what I'd do. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, so, all right, back to the, hey, the uh, shout minute. out to my alma mater, hey. NC State Wolfpack. What? It just stopped. What? I mean, it just stopped. Or it stopped for me. Oh. Still going? No, yes. Yeah, I mean, I got the feed. I'm good. Y'all I, all I good? I think I figured it out this time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got rid of the ad. I can still see the feed. I can see the video. Jeff, you want to look over his shoulder and see what he's screwed up now? 
<laughs> uh, we're good then. Uh, so my alma mater, NC State Wolfpack. Just so you know, the final four in the men's, NC State's in it. Yeah. The final four in the women's. NC State's in it. Oh, look yeah. At her. So, uh, and and the, the the Wolfpack men have uh, the Wolfpack women have been good all year. Wolfpack men have made one of the most epic runs in history. They were the eleventh seed coming into the tournament. The only reason they got into the NCAA tournament is because they won the ACC tournament. Otherwise, they wouldn't got in because they were a ten seed in the ACC tournament. Exactly. So, they're they're doing something like in reference what one bank shot away. Correct. The Virginia game. <laughs> the coach being fired and them being out. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, but, yeah, it's like a Cinderella story right now. So, if they for somehow um, – Hopefully could, they'll do it. Could figure out you how to win. pull for the underdog. Absolutely. I think everybody's pulling for NC State at this point, unless they went to Purdue or UConn or um, – who's the other team left in it? I think you want to fuss about Pur- me. <laughs> you want to fuss about me now. Uh, no. Is it Illinois? No, it's not Illinois. It's uh, – <laughs> hold on just a second. Who is the fourth so team? You Alabama. Alabama. Time, it's but. Alabama. Thank you. I should have known that. Oh, because my Mary's oh, I'll 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 get him. Yeah. Get him. Get you get, get, get on him when you get to <laughs> St. John's. But go Wolfpack. Go Wolfpack. Yeah, so, the NC State women have to play South Carolina in the Final Four. When's the game over? This, when's the thing over? Uh, after the last game. Well, I know. <laughs> when is that? It's like, like I'm, I'm, the already, final, I'm thinking ahead that, like, the it's final four is this weekend. NC State and Alabama for the championship game while y'all are at St. John's. Oh, we will just skip practice. And you and Canterbury, like I could see y'all getting ready to throw. No, throw no, we we pull for each other. Like, we, I mean, not when we're playing each other, but we pull for each other. Like, I well, that's can't, what I'm saying. Like, if you got the who'd you say the Wolfpack and the Alabama against each other. In Canterbury's not near as passionate about Alabama basketball as he is football. I know he gets riled up on some football. He now. gets fired up on some football. So does so does Dixie now. So Y'all, does Dixie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Ryan, I'm sorry, dude. I should have worn my NC State shirt. I can't believe I screwed up, man. Should have worn my NC State hoodie or something tonight, man. I, I messed that up bad. God, I messed that up. <laughs> I know. No, they ask for checks all the time. They don't – Alumni Association. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, they don't send me money. They ask for money. Uh, all right, almost 300 viewers tonight, guys, gals. We appreciate the support. It is time. No, the answer is not hashtag FBD, Aaron. It's not. It's just not. Um, fishing boat. Box. I don't even know the – let me see the question. So I can, Oh, you don't even know the answer. I don't even know the question. The question's funny. I don't know the answer either. Down at the bottom. Oh, let me write the answer, dude. Is this the question? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know the answer. I, I'm gonna write it down. See it? Okay. It's gonna take like two seconds for somebody to get it, probably. All right, y'all. By the way, almost 300, almost 300 viewers a night. E- no, we went over 300. Mr. Jones, yeah, we, we cracked 300 a little while back, but Mr. Jones said only 36 likes. We need a lot more likes. 300 viewers, Here, and we like can't it. get more than 36 I just likes. Like Did it. you like it? I just like Here, it. Here, how do I like it? Oh, I, oh, heard, you two I hit 100 Google on to it. sign in. Yeah. What? I don't want to uh, do that. <laughs> we, Ryan, you're not 0-90 on trivia questions. You're like, uh, you've answered several uh. correctly, just not fast enough. Um, all right. What was I? What was? Oh, y'all, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube. We never say that. Like, subscribe, hit the button, all the all the, 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 the notification do. bell. Somebody used to tell me they don't get notified when we go live, and I said I think there's some kind of bell, or something you got to hit on there. But. Hey, I don't get notified till like 30 minutes before when Matt calls me and said, "Brian, are you coming?" <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> that happened it's today. Not true. Well, I, you didn't respond to the group text I sent this morning, which is I not told like you. Last you. week I was coming. See, there you go. Yeah, but he, he usually he does usually reply to the group text. Exactly, he always does. I, I thought, I thought the same thing. I was like, maybe he forgot. He did it on purpose, Tyler. <laughs> he did it on purpose, trying to get me all up in a. I did do it. On <laughs> yeah, see, I told you. I saw, <laughs> told you. Matt gets all up, Tyler. <clears throat> <laughs> you ain't first, you're last on the trivia. That's right. Uh, all right, smash the bell. Jared said, "Smash the bell." That's what you're supposed to tell people. Smash the bell. Uh, the Aaron, the no FFS tournament that TAA event started today. So to answer yeah, your question, we're not fishing day. it because we're in the studio. Uh, shake and bake. That's right, baby. All right, <laughs> here we go with a trivia question. And the winner, well, send us, awesome send us Angler's Choice giveaway. Yep, the heavy duty weigh bag and a hat. Send us your shipping information. 
on our Facebook page, on our Facebook page, and we'll get your prize pack sent out to you ASAP. Compliments of Angus Choice Marine. All right. Brian was laughing about my trivia question. I thought it was kind of, I thought it was kind of funny myself. But um, all right, here's the trivia away. question. Allegedly, allegedly, it's a big word. That is a big. Word. Did I spell it right? Did you look? See, I, I can barely right? read your handwriting anyway. <laughs> I can read it just fine. That, yeah, there you go. Allegedly, how big was the female bass that knew blew out on that bed at Santee Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? That, that that one don't count because it was posted before you asked the question. Well, we have to count it. All right, count it. No, count we it. have to count it. It was count the first it. one. Count it. <clears throat> Chris count McDonald, it. you are the champion. <laughs> <laughs> he, he posted it like 15 seconds before you f- said the question. Well, I mean, I can't not, I can't not count it, though, because that's the I most agree. random. I agree. And it, it, it may, I mean. It was I, before he finished the question. We got, we got a lot of podcast watchers. Yeah, it was like right when months. I was wrapping up the yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, Chris McDonald, we're going to count that Chris, you one. are the winner. It is six pounds. <laughs> sorry, Bankwood and Houston. Sorry, um, everybody. Sorry, everybody else. <laughs> we'll but, have another giveaway at the yeah, next show. Yeah, we promise. And uh, we, I will do that, Ryan. We'll try to give away one of my new signature rods one night on the show. Um, Chris McDonald, you are a champion. Send us a message <laughs> on our Facebook page. With your Ryan shipping. says it's not official. Nobody caught it. That's why the question started with allegedly. <laughs> That's why I put allegedly in there. It's got an asterisk beside this uh, allegedly this question tonight. Look, when I say allegedly, I can make the answer anything I want to make. Obviously. <laughs> he can even say the answer. The only reason I put six is because that's what, when Upshaw did his YouTube video, that's what he referenced it as a six-pounder. Yeah. That multiple people had found it, and they all said it was like a six-pounder. So... I mean, it's probably like 6.3 ounces, but we're going to go with Maybe six. Maybe it was 5.9. So it could have been. Could have been. Nobody caught it, obviously. Nobody, so caught nobody it. knows. <laughs> Chris, send us the information again, your shipping information, name and all, and uh, on our messenger, on our Facebook page, and we'll uh, get this out to you ASAP. Brian, you got anything to add? Uh, no. No, I think I'm good. This was a good show. Got a lot of stuff talked about, and. We're going to both be gone next week. You're gone for two weeks, so probably a couple weeks before we get to have another show, but we have a lot to talk about then, too. Hopefully no more DQs or eliminations. <laughs> uh, Chris McDonald, is that uh, is that an April Fool's joke? Oh, that had been, yeah, it couldn't have been right. He said he caught the fish after the tournament and knew how big it was. <laughs> guys, we appreciate it, gals. Appreciate everybody tuning in once Thank again. You guys. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a couple weeks. I'm gone for a couple weeks back yep. back in Florida. Brian's gone. I'm going um, to uh, Del Hollow. Del Hollow next week. So we'll, we'll have another show soon. Yeah, we'll get a wrap up after I get back from Florida. Hopefully, the following Tuesday I get back. If not, the the, the Tuesday after that before we all have to leave again. So, um, again, we apologize. Our schedules overlap so much; it's hard for us to get in the studio together. But we appreciate all the support. Be sure to yes. subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the uh, punch the bell. Punch the bell. What what else? Punch the bell. <laughs> What's the bell? I don't know. Hey, it's notification bell. That's all it is. Uh, oh, got you. All right, we're gonna sign out, out of here, Brian. Head. What you tell them? If we can't go fishing, what are we gonna do, Tyler? We're going to sit right here and talk fish. Bam. See y'all next time.